In this video, we are going to talk about a problem that comes from computational geometry, the minimum enclosing bulk problem or MEB problem. We will then see how algorithms that solve the MEB problem can be used for classification and clustering. Let us first define the minimum enclosing bulk problem. Considering a set of points in a metric space, the aim is to compute the balls that contains all these points with minimum radius. Here we can see as points move in the 2D space, the ball enclosing all the points has always the smallest possible radius. The minimum enclosing ball problem can be formulated as a convex optimization problem and solved using a QP solver. With this formulation, we try to minimize the radius under the constraint that all points lie inside the enclosing ball. We call support vectors the points where the constraints are active, they lie at the surface of the ball. We can also use the Frank Wolf algorithm to compute an approximation of the minimum enclosing ball of a dataset. Here we will show an animation of how this algorithm works. In this algorithm, the ball center is expressed as a convex combination of support vectors. We start with the center located at an arbitrary point of the dataset. At step k, update the position of the center by moving towards the furthest points with coefficient 1 over k plus 1. So at first the center is here and the furthest point is over there. The new center will be around here. Here the furthest point is to the left and the center moves towards it around here, then towards the top. We see that the algorithm converges to the minimum enclosing ball. This algorithm guarantees an epsilon approximation of the ball within one over epsilon square iterations. It is worth noting that the quality of the approximation is independent of the space dimension d. The contour given by the MEB is very sensitive to outliers. We can overcome this issue by introducing a slack parameter lambda in the optimization problem. This parameter can be used to control the number of outliers. The proportion of outliers is bounded by lambda. However, the shape of the dataset is not always best described with a Euclidean enclosing ball, here a circle. That is why we can use the kernel trick. The idea is to use a dot product that comes from a Gaussian kernel. There is an implicit transformation phi associated to this dot product, which maps our data into a feature space and lets us express the center C as a convex combination of points in the feature space. Since the algorithm uses only dot products, we only need the kernel and not the explicit transformation. Now we can reformulate our convex optimization problem. It now accounts for the dot product between points expressed as a gram matrix K. Solving this problem is equivalent to the MEB problem in an unknown Hilbert feature space. Here we compute the minimum enclosing ball with a Gaussian kernel parameterized by its bandwidth sigma and roll this ball into the input space. We can see how different values of sigma give different contours for the enclosing ball. Now let's talk about the applications of describing data as per minimum enclosing balls. We will first focus on multi-class classification with support vector data description and then talk a little bit about segmentation. Minimum enclosing balls give us an accurate description of each class in the dataset, which we can use to classify new data points. In this case, we represented a linearly separable 2D dataset with two classes, A and B. We first compute the minimum enclosing ball for each class. Then, the centers of the enclosing balls induce a Voronoi diagram that we use for classification. For two classes, the decision boundary is the radical axis hyperplane for the power distance. New points are classified according to their closest centers. Here we take a new point in green. We first calculate the distances to the two enclosing ball centers. The closest center is the blue center, so the new point is classified as belonging to class A. The score we use for each point is more or less the distance to the center. The lower the score for class I, the higher the probability of belonging to class I. We can also take into account the size of the balls, for instance by using the score function, distance to the center divided by the radius, for each enclosing ball. Therefore, the decision boundary is no longer linear. Here is the column map associated to the difference between the two square functions, with this blue line being the decision boundary. But what if our dataset is not linearly separable? We just use the kernel trick, as seen before. For our 2D dataset, with the two circles representing our two classes, we compute the minimum enclosing balls. We use the Frank Wolf algorithm so that the center of each class is the barycenter of the green points. Here is the column map associated to the difference of distances to the two centers. Here, we build the decision boundaries associated to different values of the parameter sigma in the Gaussian kernel. We can see that when sigma is small enough, there is another boundary that appears. 
points very close to the origin will be classified as belonging to the external circle. As a conclusion, we will talk about how minimum and closing balls can be used to identify clusters in the dataset. Indeed, the projection of a canalized MEB onto the input space is not convex and not always connected. The support vector clustering algorithm takes advantage of these connected components to identify clusters in the dataset. Each connected component becomes a cluster. Here we show the evolution of these connected components for different values of the parameter sigma. We can see that the number of connected components decreases as sigma increases. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about these subjects, here are a few papers to get you started.